about it, is any strong fear or dislike. Homophobia is a fear of homosexuals and homosexuality. And AIDS, of course, is the deadly disease that has been labeled, and incorrectly labeled, the gay disease. And it's the concern about AIDS that has triggered a wave of homophobia in this country. And the fear of homosexuals can be found from Maine to California. Barbara? Mm. And from coast to coast, the fear has turned into hate, and the hate into violence. Not since the racial unrest of the 60s has one group of Americans suffered such abuse. John Stossel has been investigating homophobia, a term we may unfortunately become all too familiar with. Here's John's report. God did not create the homosexual relationship, but the heterosexual relationship. For homosexual, you are not saved in your sin. The term gay is given to that lifestyle, and that's anything but gay. How can you be gay when you're facing death from AIDS? You cannot go to heaven. You cannot be saved in homosexuality. Lots of people agree with those preachers. For years, homosexuals have been criticized and ridiculed. But about 15 years ago, something new happened. Gay rights now! Gay rights now! Gay Gays started fighting back. People who had hidden their homosexuality started to publicly proclaim it and to protest against discrimination. Even some parents and others you might not expect in demonstrations lent their support. For the first time, gays were saying they were proud they were gay. Out of the closet and into the street. And year after year, gay power grew. Things were getting better for homosexuals until AIDS. Today, the Center for Disease Control has said the 2,000 reported cases may be only the tip of the iceberg. There AIDS has become the new justifier for old prejudice. I asked some high school kids. Why do you think you're gay people? Uh, are you serious? I think it's um, unreligious. I think it's wrong because... Uh, like, if they, if they, like, spread AIDS around and stuff, it kills innocent people. And go to most any bar, and I bet you'll find someone who'll say... I don't think the fact that they got AIDS, they're spreading it around, they're blatant with their sex, that's what's causing it, that's what's causing a lot of spreading around, I don't like it. You think there ought to be some something done about, about them? Yeah. <laughs> what? Put them on an island like they used to do the lepers. <laughs> All over the country, homosexuals are reporting increased discrimination. Landlords, they say, are turning them away. Some dentists won't treat them. Some ambulance drivers won't stop to pick them up. Sometimes the police, they say, don't respond to their calls. Newspaper headlines add to the panic. Gays fear that insurance companies will deny coverage to all gay men. And headlines help this man lose his job. Ira Klein used to work as a waiter. He doesn't have AIDS. But when he told his boss he was doing volunteer work at a gay health center, she turned to the local newspaper for information and... Basically decided through reading about other people's reactions to the hysteria that they were right and I was going to spread the virus throughout her restaurant, somehow through the lasagna to the customers, and I got fired. Enough is enough. Vote against special privileges for homosexuals. AIDS has also become an issue in political campaigns. Houston will become a homosexual mecca if we permit laws that encourage more homosexuals to settle here, increasing the threat to your health. More often, the politicians are not so direct. They use code words like, I'm the family candidate. What may have been this politician's real feelings came out on this local news show when he didn't think his voice was being broadcast. Mayoral candidate Louis Welch has announced his plan for dealing with AIDS in Houston. We'll talk live with the candidate about his four-part answer to combating spread of that disease. Four points. I can't remember, but two of them. What was that? One of them was to shoot the queers. <laughs> shoot the queers? He later said it was a joke. It's not a joke to David. He's the showroom manager of a tile business in San Francisco, and he's gay. His lover, Matthew, works in the financial department of a major corporation. David and Matthew have been living together for four years. It's difficult for David to talk now because his broken jaw is wired shut. One evening, after they'd been shopping at this supermarket, some teenagers started calling them names, saying things like, You're lucky that you're killing yourself with your AIDS before you kill the rest of us. They blocked the exit of two elderly black women. They called them niggers. And uh, basically what it was was, you stupid black women shouldn't be shopping at a store where faggots are shopping. You're going to catch AIDS and die. And that's when I'd had enough, and I went over there. The guy 
pushed me. David was hit from behind by two attackers. One used a chain, the other a skateboard. Split his head open. What I saw was blood coming down the side of his face and what I thought was coming out of his ear. Fighting off the bashers, David Matthew got into their car, but as they tried to drive away... At least three people grabbed me on the passenger side and pulled me out of the car. Another one was uh, bashing the front of the car in. They hit me in the front of the head with the skateboard. I leaned back up to see in front of me David with now what was probably anywhere from seven to ten people had him down on the street. They were kicking him in the kidneys. As he rolled to one side, they would kick him in the ribs. They had another skateboard. They were using the front edge of the skateboard to beat him in the face. Why you guys? There is no why. The why is just it's senseless violence. It was aggravated. It gave them a purpose for it, yes. Do you have AIDS? No. <laughs> I'm sure no signs of it at all. David doesn't either. They're not going to get it from touching us. They're not going to get it from our saliva. They're not going to get it if we from... Sneeze over from yeah, them. if we sneeze on them. I mean, open their eyes. It's in the paper. Read it. We're just people. We lead normal lives. We leave up to now happy lives. How can they justifiably do this to people? When many people think of homosexuals, they think of effeminate men or macho men dressed like some of the people you see in the San Francisco leather bar. But these are the stereotypes. Most gays don't look like this. In fact, since one in ten people is said to be gay, chances are some of your friends are gay. They just haven't told you. Socrates was gay. So was Aristotle, Leonardo da Vinci, Peter the Great, Hans Christian Andersen, Walt Whitman, and Tchaikovsky. The American Psychological Association says being gay implies no impairment of a person's stability or judgment, and homosexuality is not an illness. Nevertheless, many people believe gays are sick. You are perverted scum and should all be eliminated. The only good queer is a dead queer. Get AIDS for Christmas, then die. This is hate mail that's increasingly being sent to gay organizations. Randy Shell works at one in San Francisco, a gay violence counseling center here on Castro Street at the heart of San Francisco's gay district. He and other counselors throughout the country say complaints about gay discrimination and violence, gay bashing is the name for it, have risen dramatically. People report being victims of gunshot wounds, of knivings, assaults with baseball bats, usually accompanied with uh, statements as to the sexuality of the victim. What you're, do you mean? You're queer, um, you're a faggot, um, and now, uh, in this day and age, um, you're disease-ridden, roll aids, disease faggot. When you say knives and baseball bats, that implies people are, are dying. People are dying. People in San Francisco have been found with uh, their testicles removed stuffed in their mouths. In Bangor, Maine, a man was thrown over a bridge and he's drowned. And in Maine, when a vigil was held to honor the gay man who was killed, more hatred emerged. Why make such a big thing out of losing one of you guys? God got rid of you all in the Old Testament. So much hatred. Because of the public hysteria around AIDS, AIDS is now synonymous with the word gay. Gay equals AIDS. Gays equal AIDS. And this gives people an excuse to beat you up. Society's never needed an excuse to beat up gay people ever before. People have always been beaten up. Now it's, it is a justification of that. It's another reason to go and beat up somebody. Hey, they're diseased. Hey, the lifestyle that they lead, uh, we knew it was bad. We knew it was sick. And so therefore, what's, what the hell? We'll just go out and we'll beat them up. They just kept coming at me faster and faster. I said, leave me alone. What do you want? Nothing. So I reached in my pocket, had my mace in my pocket. One night my before Christmas, going. Jim Langham was walking through his San Francisco neighborhood when a gang of kids and their leader tried to attack him. His first words were, oh, you're going to mace me, huh? I said, yes, if you don't leave me alone. And he started to run at me, and I let him have it and his friends had joined him and they all started chasing me down the street. By that time I had my whistle out. As Jim blew his whistle for help, this man, Phil Lechner, happened to be walking by. He didn't know Jim, but he stopped anyway. 
I ran out and saw this gang of kids running down the street. This one guy came after me and he's screaming at me, you fags, you're killing everyone with AIDS, we're gonna kill you. And that's when I got hit in the head with the brick. None of the gay bashers was picked up by the police and in the weeks that followed, the harassment continued. So 2020 asked Jim to return to the street to show us how this kind of violence happens again and again. Since Jim was facing a possible attack, this plainclothes officer from the San Francisco Police Department kept watch at our request. With our camera in position, we waited with Jim. And sure enough, the attacker he'd previously maced came back for him. Wow. Wait till I catch you without your mace. You ain't going to. I ain't going to watch. Let's go. Even the basher's girlfriend couldn't convince him to leave the gay man alone. No. What? I said punk. What's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with you. What's wrong with you? No. Assured of police protection, Jim stood his ground. What's wrong with you? Yeah? Yeah? The cop breaks it up before it gets too violent. The attacker turned out to be 16. Why is he so angry at homosexuals? Is it fear of AIDS? I don't think so, because as the gay activist said, People have always beaten up homosexuals. And if you think about it, beating someone increases the intimate contact with them. Something else is going on here. In San Francisco some time ago, a man killed a gay man, stranger, he didn't know him, by stabbing him 17 times. And each time he stabbed, he screamed, faggot, faggot. What causes such hatred? Psychologists say it has to do with fear of homosexuality. Homophobia, they call it. And to understand it, you first have to ask, who are the people doing most of the gay bashing? Most of the people who are doing the gay bashing in this country are younger males. Yale Why? University professor Greg Herrick has been doing research on homophobia for nine years. Why young males? Young males are at a point in their lives when they really need to say who they are. And it's part of saying, who am I, is saying, I'm a man. And so by expressing hostile, hostile feelings toward gay men or by actually uh, engaging in violence against gay men, an adolescent male can say, here's what I'm not. I must be a man because I'm, you know, I hate this, this sort of person. I didn't uh, agree with their lifestyle. I felt they should change. I felt they were spreading AIDS around, killing innocent people. Doug Barr knows about homophobia firsthand. He and three friends were charged in the gay bashing death of this San Francisco man. Although Doug was acquitted of that crime, he's spending time in prison for his part in three other assaults. What was the attitude of the, not even this group that's in prison, but all your other friends? And they, they hated them. They hate homosexuals. They feel that it's uh, degrading their manhood. Degrading your manhood? What, what do you mean? You brought up in a, in a high school that football players are mean and macho, right? And then you have the other side of it, I guess, that homosexuals are sissies who wear dresses. I mean, I'd rather be looked upon as a football player. But why beat up a homosexual? Because they're sissies. They were sissies. There are always groups within a society that are selected, that are popularly perceived as being out groups, as being groups that it's okay to hate and it's okay to attack. Uh, in this country, historically, it has been people who are not white. And now it's not okay to discriminate against those groups. However, there is a group that it's okay to discriminate against, and it's okay even to express hostility toward publicly, and that group is lesbians and gay men. We walked past this large crowd of guys, and we started hearing comments like, oh, look at the cute gay couple. Finally, meet Tom and Jan Matarisi, married and living with their baby in Brooklyn, New York, and among a growing number of straights who've been attacked because the bashers assumed they were gay. Jan's tomboy looks probably led to the incident. It gave this couple a personal view of anti-gay violence. And Tommy said, you know, why don't you unbutton your jacket and show these jerks you're a woman so we could get out of here. So I did, and we turned around, and I saw Tom being punched, and he got a blow to his temple and got thrown up against a car. And then I got close 
to the front of the car and he punched me, started punching me in the face over in here. You feel you got some insights into homophobia because of this? Yeah, we had no idea of how widespread it was. We, it's on every level. How do you feel when people say, uh, look at that gay couple? We used to laugh. Now we realize how heavy the implications are. Now we know what the gay community does go through. The dignity of the person, at least in the American dream, I think is beyond the notion of one's sexuality. The dream is that everybody should be able to walk free and be free of assaults. But we are not, gay people are not privileged with that. We've never been privileged with it. And it's going to take a whole lot of work that we can be privileged with the ability to walk down the street and be free. John, with all the activism and the strides toward more justice for gays, is anything better for them now? Well, in terms of the complaints about gay bashing and discrimination, uh, last reports we get are that things are not getting better. The complaints are rising. And I learned yesterday that at that same street corner where we filmed, uh, there was another gay bashing. This time they hit a guy with a lead pipe. Mm. Uh, same place just a few days ago. You know, it's, it's sad that the root of this violence, at least the triggering mechanism of the violence, is a fear of AIDS that's not only exaggerated, but in some cases totally groundless. And totally exaggerated. All the scientific evidence seems to say that you just cannot get it from casual contact. You need intimate contact to get AIDS. This is a strong report, and I like to think, John, it'll do some good. You know, if, if one person tuned in who had a desire to do violence to a fellow human changes his mind, I don't mean about homosexuality, I mean about the violence, it'll have been more than worth the work, I would think. I think so. It's, it's the hatred that's the ugly part. Thank you, John.